Hello friends and welcome to my seminar. And my seminar topic is Swarm Robotics. These are the contents that we are going to discuss throughout the seminar. So, what is Swarm Robotics? Swarm Robotics is actually a new approach in which large number of robots are autonomously controlled, coordinated together to complete a single task. And these robots exhibit some sort of collective behavior and these robots are also capable of local communication. These robots collect data or information from its surroundings by using sensors mounted on these robots like RGB camera, IR sensors, sonars, lidars, etc. These informations collected are shared between these individual robots in the swarm from which a map is developed for its smooth navigation across the real world. Okay, now let's see why do we use these robots. Swarm robots can be used in any situations for reducing human efforts. These robots can be pre-programmed according to the environment as well as the nature of the task to be allocated to these robots. The photo shows a situation in a tsunami affected area in which swarm robots are used in search and rescue operations. As we know, under each and every concept, there should be a factor of inspiration. Swarm robotics concept is actually inspired from collective behavior observed in some kind of social insects like ants, bees, birds, etc. You can see in the video that how these ants are carrying their food from the food source towards the nest. There is no a central coordinator in this system. The ants actually move by observing the behavior of its neighbor. And from this collective behavior of ants, there is an algorithm called ant colony optimization. It is a base or core algorithm used in robotics that we will discuss later. Control approach. In swarm robotics, we mainly use two types of control approach. One is centralized and other one is decentralized. In the case of a centralized control approach, the system will have a leader and some of the individual robots. These individual robots scan its surrounding and gather some sort of information regarding obstacles, location of the targets, etc. These informations will be sent towards the leader by these individual robots. Then the leader computes this information, generate a map of its surrounding for proper controlled navigation. Other type of control approach we use in swarm robotics is a decentralized control approach. All the robots in a decentralized control approach will be autonomous and will depend upon other robots to gather some information about the path, location of the target, obstacles, etc. In the previous slide, we saw the video of an ant. It's actually an example of a decentralized control. Ant colony optimization algorithm is actually derived from collective behavior observed in ants. Let's consider the figure F be the food source and N be the nest. We know that the ants wander randomly until it finds the food source F and then it returns to the nest N by laying pheromone trails. Other ants will smell this pheromone level and follow the path of the first ant. After some time, the pheromones in the longest path will be get evaporated and pheromones in the shortest path will be get restored. And hence a shortest path is selected. The first equation shows probability of k than to travel from x to y. And txy is a concentration of pheromone level, nxy is a probability of selection of the path. Now the second equation shows pheromone update where Txy is the concentration of pheromone, one is the maximum probability, rho is the coefficient of evaporation and delta Txy is the change in pheromone concentration. Now let's see how ant colony optimization algorithm is implemented in robotics. A group of robots are deployed from a starting point. The starting point is set in the map. 
and these robots will randomly search for a path after selecting a path these robots will start its searching operation and checks if the target is found or not if the answer is no it will then go back to the starting point after some time and then it will select a new path for the searching operation if the answer was yes then it will again check whether the path is shortest path or not if it is a shortest path then this path gets stored in the pheromone server and the previously stored path will get deleted this new selected path will be updated in the map for future search and rescue operations and then the system checks if the objective is complete or not if the objective is complete then these operations will be stopped and if it is not complete it will then again go back to the starting point and select a new random path and continue its searching operation communication mainly two types of communication are used in swarm robotics the first one is implicit and other one is explicit in the case of a implicit communication it is actually an indirect communication in which two individual robots are not directly involved virtual pheromone stick merge etc are examples for implicit communication another one is explicit communication in the case of an explicit communication it is actually a direct communication in which two robots are directly involved in sharing information between each other bluetooth manet etc are examples of an explicit type communication virtual pheromone this ver concept of virtual pheromone is actually derived from the swarm behavior of ants for the practical implementation of virtual pheromone concept we can use physical markers chemicals coloradings etc however these methods are not so effective so we use rfid tag this rfid tags consist of memory spaces in which robots id can be stored and these informations are frequently sent to a pheromone server and these informations are updated in a map now let's see an example consider an rfid tag attached to a door when a robot passes the door its id will be stored in the rfid tag and these informations can be updated in the map the figure shows the memory location of an rfid tag it consists of a counter which actually counts the number of robots pass through the door it consists of a time stamp and it is actually used in the case of pheromone evaporation other method you see is stick merge in this method the robots actually change its environment to communicate each other the most frequent method used is rgb leds uh, these robots form some kind of color patterns and the meaning of each color pattern will be stored or pre programmed in these robots another communication used is infrared communication it is actually a line of sight communication in which is mainly used for locating the robots each other bluetooth bluetooth transceivers are integrated to mobile robots for establishing a connection between a robot and a server it is actually used for keeping a constant distance between two neighboring robots manet or mobile ad hoc network is actually a wireless communication in which there is no need of a central control node or interfacing devices such as routers switches etc another one is wireless sensor network they are actually a group of sensor arrays used for monitoring physical or environmental conditions such as temperature sounds obstacles etc they gathers information from its surroundings and sends this gathered information to the main server mapping and localization mapping and localization actually plays a key role in determining the stability of a swarm robotic system mapping is actually the representation of physical environment explored by a robot localization is defined as finding the absolute position of the robot in the previously defined map actually mapping and localization is a complex process and this problem is called slam simultaneous localization and map for solving the problem of slam we use lidar the full form of lidar is light detection and ranging lidar is actually a remote sensing technology 
which uses laser light for measuring the distance of target by illuminating target with laser light. The LIDAR instrument fires rapid pulses of laser light. A sensor on the instrument measures the amount of light which is uh, reflected back from the target and it will then calculate the time taken for each pulse to bounce back. We know that the lights move on a constant speed so the determination of uh, time and distance will not be a complex task. By repeating this method we can explore an in unknown environment and reconfigurable robots. Reconfigurable robots are robots that can change their own shape by rearranging the connectivity of their parts in order to adapt a new circumstance or to perform a new task or even recover from damage. Now I will show you an experimental example for the centralized control approach. The first figure shows a footboard and the second figure shows an iPod. A footboard consists of an omnidirectional camera for sensing its neighbors or for implementing stick merging. It consists of RFID read or write apparatus for implementing virtual pheromone. And it consists of distance scanner for mapping and RGB LEDs and it also consists of proximity sensor for obstacle avoidance system. Another one is an iBot. It is actually the leader in the centralized system. Now we can take a look at the experience. First, the objective. Task allocation and selection of individual robots. Some tasks are difficult to achieve individually. So these robots self-assemble themselves to form different morphologies. Morphologies are patterns formed during the self-assembly. Steps. First, the iBot scans the surrounding for the target. When it finds a target, it will then search for the robots near to the target. Now it plans for a morphology for the self-assembly. And then it initiates the selection process. The footboards randomly change color for taking part in the selection process. The iBot will then match the color of the footboard by changing its own color. After the selection process is complete, the robots will move towards the target uh, for achieving the objective in a defined morphology. This is a video showing self-assembly, task allocation and selection of individual robots in a swarm. Now they are initiating the selection process. The iBot scans for in its environment for the target. The footboards are taking part in selection process by changing its color. Now the selection is completed and other robots are eliminated. They are forming morphologies. It is a line morphology. The robots are moving the target. These are the advantages of a swarm robotic system. First is parallelism. A complex task can be subdivided into uh, subtasks, and these tasks can be given to individual robots for a fast output. The second one is robustness. The failure of a single individual will not fail the whole system. Scalability. The number of robots in this robotic swarm can be increased or decreased according to the complexity of the task. Other one is heterogeneity. Robots with different physical properties can be used. These are the applications of a swarm robotic system. Swarm robots can be used in military applications, medical applications, for video surveillance in hazardous conditions 
They can be also used for mapping an unknown environment. They are used in manufacturing industries for finding and manipulating a target. These are the main disadvantages of a swarm robotic system. The first one is battery life. So the battery life of these robots are limited to certain hours. So certain measures should be taken to improve the battery life like uh, wireless power transmissions. Mm. Other limitation is a uh, problem of SLAM that is simultaneous localization and mapping in real world will consume time due to the limitation of the current technology. And the industrial form communication can be also affected by atmospheric as well as the physical conditions. Now, the conclusion. Uh, the swarm robotic concept is an adaptable technology that can be used for video surveillance in a hazardous environment that are un uh, unsuitable for human interactions and also for transporting objects in manufacturing industries. This can also be used for search and rescue operations uh, and for military applications. I am concluding my seminar. Thank you for listening.